generally speaking, scaling to body weight seems to do fine in the longitudinal trials where that's how they dose protein. Uh, but I think when you look at the mechanistic reasons that larger people probably ought to need more protein, and then you look at the practical considerations, I think in, when you really dig into it, it seems most intuitive to me to scale recommendations to fat-free mass, and ultimately that's that's why we do it that way in macro factor. So it's a good question, and you're, you'll probably notice that I, I don't just like give a very specific, clear answer and say, here's the exact study that shows it. And it's because you really have to piece it together here and focus on piecing together research that is, you know, there's some longitudinal studies, there are some kind of mechanistic theoretical considerations to keep in mind, there are practical considerations to keep in mind. But a study that simply, as far as I'm aware, has not been done is the one where they say, this is a longitudinal study where we show conclusively that scaling to body weight is better than a flat recommendation across the board and also scaling to fat free mass is even better than scaling to total body weight yeah uh, it would take quite a study to do that like it'd be quite an undertaking but um yeah that 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 is my perspective on the question at hand yeah i i'm uh i i would say i'm very sympathetic to the perspective that uh maybe scaling to total body mass isn't the best way to do it um, largely just from coming from the training side of things where for decades, when you were talking about like, uh, uh, quantifying training dose, like volume load was the only thing used or like the thing al almost exclusively used, um, where it's just like, yeah, we're, we're going to do sets times weight times load. And, and that's what we're going to use to normalize things. And, uh, seems to work in the literature, so that's what we're going to go with. Um, but then you look at the literature, and it's like, well, this is this is the only thing you use. Like, you haven't tested alternatives. And then what, what really broke the floodgates open was when people started doing more low-load training research where, you know, you're normalizing the number of sets people are performing, but total volume load is much higher with low-load training, but you're still getting pretty similar hypertrophy responses. And that kind of got people thinking like, eh, maybe, maybe sets is both simpler and better. Like it, it seems to be more predictive of hypertrophy than total volume load is. Um, as you mentioned, there, there hasn't been an ideal study in the nutrition world to see if a similar dynamic could be in play with protein. Um, and so I, I'm sympathetic to the argument that it might be. Um, but yeah, we, we would just need uh, some some pretty audacious studies to uh, to to really dig into that. Yeah, and and it's possible that maybe there's something even better than, you know, even if we assume that scaling to body weight is better than a flat dose, and we assume that scaling to fat free mass is better than scaling to total body weight. Even if we assume all that to be true, it's possible that there could be something even better uh, than that because uh, I would expect that muscle and non-muscle fat-free tissues have a different impact on protein needs you know um there, there are, on one hand you're thinking about the actual turnover of skeletal muscle proteins and how if you know if you grow bigger and bigger with more hypertrophy maybe that factors into it you also have to think about uh splanchnic extraction like extraction of gut tissues that are you know, taking some of that protein uh, for their own use before it, you know, makes it out uh, and ultimately makes it to skeletal muscle tissues. Um, you know, th th there's a lot to be considered there. Uh, so it it's very possible that even scaling to fat-free mass as if it's just a singular thing could be, uh, you know, an, an oversimplification. So you could get down into details as granular as you wish in terms of kind of theorizing and mechanistic speculation but for me uh i think that recommendations currently do pretty well if you're using total body weight over kind of the the middle portion of the range of body body fat percentage values um and but the the nice thing about fat free mass recommendations uh you know scaling to fat free mass is that you can generalize and extrapolate that even into the extremes of uh 
very far below average body fat levels and very far above average body fat levels. So for my use, uh, that comes in handy for me personally.